Hello and welcome to the first September class. Um, here I'm showing you a quick, um, just a quick little bit of how I set up my work area. I have a huge desk and then it is covered with a nonstick craft mat that is heat resistant, a huge, huge section of it. And then I put down a piece of paper that I can work on. It's just a piece of newsprint and it's commonly referred to as under paper. And uh, I work on this also when I have the heat resistant protective surface, but then the newsprint is there to catch all the extra paint and um, for me to stamp on and make marks and things like that to test before I do them on my actual project. And so today I have a bunch of these under papers laying around and uh, I wanted to use them on our project. So I am ripping some different sections out of it to help create my background. And what's really great about this is it gives me a jumping off point and I'm not like sitting around thinking about what I should do or this or that or color combinations or stamp or, or anything like that. So it's a really great, it's a really great um, jump starter to get my creative juices flowing. And I'm just using some Yoohoo glue stick to put them down and uh, I'm really excited that I saw some other people mention this glue stick because I do really love it and you can see it's purple it's colored purple and then uh, as it dries it dries clear so that's great and uh, you can see exactly where it's going if you need more if it's drying too quick if you uh, need to get more on etc and so I did have that bottom layer and uh, now I'm going to put on uh, a top area another piece of that under paper from the same the same thing there and I do love white space so I'm leaving the white space on purpose and uh, white space makes my heart sing <laughs> I'm so sorry about that funny little thing there at the bottom of the the video, I didn't notice that there was something hanging off of my tablet as I was recording. I apologize about that. Um, now I've got, got out some acrylic paints and um, I have a few different kinds. And one of the things that I really like to tell the art journaling class and that I'm telling you because you're a part of it is uh, feel free to use different kinds of acrylic paints. They're all going to work together. Some of them are going to be heavy body and which means they're thicker and they hold their shape more. Some of them are going to be thinner. Um, some of them are more opaque, even though acrylic paint in, in general is intended to be um, pretty opaque. Uh, you can use craft paints or blick paint or Liquitex or golden. You can use them all together if you like one certain shade and one kind of, um, and one paint by one company and, but you don't like the others. You know, it's definitely, um, it's great to experiment and kind of, kind of figure out what you like, but don't be afraid to try them together as well. So what I'm doing now at this point is I'm just creating some cohesiveness uh, amongst the the background that I've got going on. So I'm taking the colors that were already on the under paper and I'm spreading them out around the pa the page now. And I'm doing some, some intuitive painting. I'm scraping color on, I'm stenciling, I'm making circles and I'm making swipes and I'm taking color out with stencils. That's the new, that's one of my new stencils for Seven Dot Studio. The, it's called Wonky Half Tone. And I'm going to trim up those edges uh, just so that I can have a better idea of what's happening. Uh, when things go off the edge, then my eye tends to go off the edge tends to travel uh, over that hard edge and it's a little bit hard for me to concentrate sometimes. So I don't always create everything with a straight edge. In fact, when I'm doing tags and cards, a lot of my stuff does hang off on purpose. But when it comes to art journaling, I always like a nice border. And that's different for everybody, but it helps me um, figure out exactly what I want to do and kind of keep everything contained, per se. So now I this is kind of like my my handmade stamps box. I've got like sponges and erasers and things in there to make stamps out of. And I actually really dislike what I end up doing here, but it's part of the process. So I'm definitely going to share that. Um, I took this really, really 
really spongy sponge like it's like super foam and I um, cut a chevron in it and then dipped it into the paint but it really didn't matter what I was doing I I wasn't very happy with the shape of the chevrons and uh, you can see now I have I put new underpaper down before I started working that lime green paint now is kind of this like little cool splotchy area and I could use a palette as well but I I really love having the underpaper as a jumping off point or something else later and then there on the right I used a paintbrush to um to fix my chevrons because I wasn't happy with the shape and the paintbrush then had paint in it so as I washed it off I just um, dampened it on the under paper and now there are areas up there too but it serves two purposes right it's adding more texture to my under paper but it's also helping me see when my paintbrush is clean as that paint was still wet on some of the chevrons I did take a moment <clears throat> to lift some of the paint out through a stencil and now I'm creating some lines uh, using a credit card an old credit card or an offer that we got in the mail that we didn't take and I'm feeling like it's looking pretty good, but I need something else. Like the color just, it, it is really great, the color, but I definitely need another contrast color. So I had that kind of really cool teal going on um, on the underpaper in a couple really small spots. So I started creating some circles, some random circles. And actually in the art journal page that I made in class, because I do one first and then I go ahead and uh, remake it in class to demo, um, I carried those circles all the way across the page, which I really like. So I did want to make that suggestion, you know, go ahead and cover those or carry those across the page. Right there you can see I used the paint, um, the same turquoise paint through the stencil, and then it was very heavy. So while it was still wet, I just took a baby wipe and laid it right over the top. And that helped pick up some of the like heavy, dense, bright paint that was there. Um, because I was really enjoying the circles being kind of the center of attention. And uh, I didn't want that corner to take away from that. And now I'm using the edge of the credit card again and kind of just outlining the chevrons. And I'll do the same thing here as I had done before. I am going to lift up some of the paint. But this time, um, I'm going to do it a bit more enthusiastically, I guess I could say. And I'm going to scrub away quite a bit of the paint that's there. But the, the effect uh, is really, really great. And you'll see some close-up shots, shots of that either at the beginning or the end of the video. And this will always be one of my favorite techniques, just splattering some paint and, and we're working on creating a cohesive background that is um, that doesn't have all these harsh edges. And I say that a lot. You now color blocking and edges are not bad. It's just that sometimes what I, I want to avoid those to create more, um, I don't even know how to say it, just to create a cohesive piece because I'm creating a whole landscape rather than sections. But I love sectioned work too, so <laughs> it's not bad. I'm just not going for that effect today. Now I've got two Stabilos and I'm using um, the black Stabilo on the outside and the white Stabilo on the inside. And these are the Marksol pencils that are water soluble. Now I've got a clean brush and it's small and I'm just activating that white on the inside a little bit. Not too much because it is white so if you add too much water to it then it really drowns it out. But just enough to kind of get it flowing and now I'm doing the black as well. And it's the same thing here. I'm not using too much because I still want it to be kind of sketchy but I want that black to pop a little bit more so. And then drying everything. And the thing about those Stabilos, now the acrylics are permanent once they're dry, right? They're done, they're down. But uh, the Stabilos are going to always be water soluble. So you have to keep that in mind. And I cut out some circles from some book text and I was really loving the addition of those. And I think what works really great, the color of the under paper is this kind of like gray kind of taupey color. Um, and I know taupe, but I always say 
taupey or taupe-ish color, right? And uh, so that book text was really playing off that underpaper really, really well. And you can see where I let the underpaper show through, too. Um, bringing back up that Yoohoo stick, and the Yoohoo stick does come in three varieties that I've seen. It comes in blue and purple, which both dry clear, and then it comes in clear as well, which of course dries clear. And then they have different sizes of sticks, so I even have like a travel one that I keep uh, by my bed when I'm when I'm in bed at night watching TV with the mister and uh, decide I need to do a little art journaling. So I was really, really loving, like I said, that book text and how it was playing off of that paper. So um, I took one of the areas where I had cut out a circle and I kind of just ripped the edges there. And I'm going to glue that down. And I find that this is hard for me to just glue something down and move on. Um, I, I almost always have to have a purpose for it. So I'm trying to work on that more. Now this is my binder of Umwell Studio stencils. And... Uh, yeah, our our stencils at Umwell Studio are a bit thicker than other stencils. They are plastic, but the thickness of them is closer to a metal stencil, like a brass stencil. And uh, it makes a really great um, tool for creating texture and depth in your project. And this is some gesso. This is a uh, Blick gesso. And I'm scraping it through my numbers. Bringing back a little bit more of the white space. And heat, 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 dry, dry, dry. And then I, let's see, I think my brain got kind of crazy right here. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if they were colored instead of white, even though I had planned on adding white space? I am not 100% sure. So I got out some Distress Stain Spray and I sprayed that and the thing about it is that it's water soluble and it never goes down quite as I had planned and it's a little bit foggy and I'm not sure. Yeah, I got kind of crazy there. So then I lifted the color up a little bit like I had shown before and, and it was a little bit better and I think I just went with it at this point. And I may not be loving it yet, but we'll work on it. <laughs> do, 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 do. Sorry, I should enter some music here. Usually I stop the video while I'm while I'm drawing. Okay, so this is um, a stencil and or a mask that I just cut out of some cardstock, and it has been brought to um, request that I should make some of these out of plastic, and so I will be doing that so that those can be available in the Amwile Studio Store. Uh, but for this purpose, you can just use any any stencil or any mask or any silhouette that you have of a human or a a human shaped um, figure and uh, you can cut it out of your silhouette or you can cut it by hand or maybe you have a really cool stamp you can stamp down and then just trim the outside edge uh, and I'm going in with some uh, golden fluid acrylic paint and the reason I'm using the fluid is because I know for sure that I want to add water to it and really blend it out I'm so sorry about my dog in the background he's barking at other dogs um I really want to blend it out and what you'll see happening here is there's some of that raw under paper which is newsprint so it's really uh, porous and it's really sticking out and then um, it's really gonna soak up that golden fluid acrylic and create a really nice uh, area. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take care of the dog. <laughs> um, anyways, so as I was saying, the underpaper where it's raw, it's super porous and it's gonna really soak up the um, 
the fluidity or the water content of the paint. And then where I'm putting acrylic on acrylic, it's going to do some other things and it's going to not dry as quick. It's going to layer differently. I'll be able to spread it out more. So the shadow effect of my figure is going to be very, very cool. In some places, it's going to be really harsh. In some places, it's going to spread out nice and evenly. Um, I might add more water to help it spread out, or I might be adding more paint. And I'm kind of just going to play with it. And uh, I, I definitely want to suggest to you to not cover everything when you're working on your background, because then you can also see how the paint's going to react differently on different surfaces. Because the Golden Fluid Acrylic is acrylic paint, similar to the other paints, but it really, um, it has a fluidity to it that other paints don't have, meaning its life is extended as far as dry, how fast it dries, and uh, it really does some great things when you add water to it. It really, really does. So it's very cool, very cool effect. And I did decide that I was pretty, pretty happy with... Um, excuse me, with where I had taken that shadow, that kind of silhouette effect. And uh, so I did dry that and then it's permanent and I can't take any more away. And I'm just going to extend it now. I felt like he could use a little more oomph or she, he or she, uh, my, my figure could use a little more oomph and a bit darker, bigger background at the top and the bottom to really ground it into place. And grounding is kind of a term that just, or anchoring is good too. They both kind of mean the same thing um, in this use. And it just means it's not floating in the middle of nowhere, right? The paint is attached to an edge or has a very specific purpose. And it's not, not just a big kind of open something. So I was just working harder on grounding that and then drying between my layers and adding a little more and drying and adding. And so I've actually used quite a few different acrylics on here. I've used um, a super like cheap craft. I think it's Americana paint, acrylic paint. It's like 50 cents a bottle. I've used Blick a big bottle of Blick acrylic. I've used Liquitex Basics acrylic. I've used Golden Fluid acrylic. And even the Gesso, though it's not acrylic based, um, it is, it was a Blick version as well. So it's, it's a different, a different um, being altogether. And I have, I do have the Gesso back out. You can see here, and I'm using a flat spatula tool. And I'm just uh, kind of scraping it along some areas in the project to pick up some of the top texture that's going on. And just to highlight some of the 3D-ness that my project has ended up with. Between the layers of paint and the stenciling and the paper, it's got some really great, uh, beautiful textures. All right, and I really think that's it. Um, oh yeah, I did I did kind of play with adding a, something else like a sentiment or a feeling or or words or something and then I wasn't sure I wasn't sure how I wanted to anchor those, right? And uh, so I think I just ended up leaving it off, which is great too. Like like paintings don't or art journaling, you know, this is more like a miniature painting, but oh, that's right. I did end up I'm so sorry. I know, right? Um I film these and then sometimes I edit them weeks later. I actually really love this. I got out my black fine liner and I'm trying not to use the fine liner in every single project, especially at art journaling because I'm always trying to teach or, or kind of demonstrate new stuff. But I really love the fine liner on that half of the, the silhouette body. So I did pick the black fine liner. Now, if I had chosen a white fine liner or even a color, I would have seen it both on the silhouette and on the black shadow. Mm, but I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not hurt about that. I really like the effect that this has and uh, I can't wait to see what you do. Uh, you know, don't forget to just um, pull from some things you have and don't forget to do what you love. And I'm excited to see how yours turns out. Thanks so much for joining me.